Hello, my name is Gowrie. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you enjoy the video. Please show support by subscribing. Thank you. This is a picture of a Silistani farm boy hugging a baby alpaca. Silistani uh, children watching the visitors with great interest and uh, mischievousness. What we see here is a very uh, typical village scene in the Peruvian rural areas where children play a major role in uh, taking care of the uh, herds. Uh, alpaca is what we see here to help their parents. We are entering the burial grounds of Silistani. Uh, this is a, an excellent example of uh, the Incan uh, burial towers. Uh, we will also notice a lizard, uh, an etching of a lizard on the burial tower uh, which is uh, uh, very important to the Incans. Uh, lizards or snakes are said to be uh, the messenger to gods. Here we see a good side-by-side -side example of both pre-Incan and Incan uh, built burial uh, towers. Uh, the pre-Incan uh, obviously did not have the same type of a sophisticated covering uh, while they were burying their uh, members of uh, royalty or nobility. This is a good profile of an Incan burial tower. We see inside uh, an egg-like structure uh, which basically denotes uh, mother fertility and covered uh, by the protective uh, sheath outside which is a tower. Uh, this is supposed to depict uh, the mother earth and uh, you know, uh, reincarnation uh, type of uh, uh, philosophy. Here we see a clear picture of the uh, uh, the tower itself, like uh, the outer sheath, which is the male, and inside we see is the womb of the female or the egg-shaped structure. Uh, basically, this whole idea is uh, uh, telling us that the Incans uh, you know believed uh, in the fertility images uh, on these burial grounds uh, depicting uh, rebirth reincarnation ideas a beautiful silhouette of the Silistani burial grounds as the sun is setting paving way for another new day in this picture you see us getting ready to go to the harbor uh, this this uh, vehicle is called a tricycle and we're going to go to the harbor get some gifts for the families in the Amantani island like uh, practical gifts like rice pasta oil for cooking candles because they don't have any electricity uh, fruits because children love uh, fresh fruits uh, any other treats that we may uh, want to give them uh, uh, in show of appreciation. This is the view we see uh, from the boat as we leave the harbor. Uh, we are going to discover uh, the various communities who live on and around Lake Titicaca. Uh, the first stop is going to be to visit people of Euros who has made Lake Titicaca their home literally they live on islands made of the reed uh, which is grown uh, and uh, cultivated right from Titicaca this is an example of the floating island of Lake Titicaca where we see people of Euros uh, live uh, on a day-to-day -day basis um, People of Euros, they speak uh, 
Aymara uh, language they are the Aymara Indians and they uh, are said to be uh, here well before the Incans uh, the Incans never ever managed to conquer uh, people of Euros because they basically uh, escaped uh, the clutches of the Incans and uh, decided to make home right in the middle of the lake this is another perspective of the uh, Euros community uh, where the Aymara Indians have settled well before the Incans have arrived in Peru. This young family we see here belongs to the Euros community, the ones that we came across uh, when we first landed and uh, Percy, our guide, spent quite a bit of time um, right beside them explaining about the lifestyle of the Euros people and uh, you know what they did for their living uh, you know basically selling knitted articles to the uh, tourists uh, very very poor community and they really uh, rely a lot upon their own hard work and uh, and and they do that constantly they are busy doing something or other again you know the not being lazy philosophy Percy here is demonstrating the multiple usage of the reeds that are cultivated right from Lake Titicaca uh, their home uh, since they live on the floating islands right on the lake <laughs> pretty bizarre it's absolutely bizarre uh, the amount of reeds that are cultivated and uh, you utilized every bit of it you know in the housing and uh, you know the f flowing of the island itself uh, plus also the various artifacts that they create or the reeds and the boat uh, let's not forget the boat is also built by the reeds uh, and also young shoots of the reeds are also eaten because uh, they taste like celery by the way uh, so it's just absolutely amazing totally out of this world here's a local woman who is uh, utilizing one of the most uh, you know quote unquote barbaric method but highly sophisticated because it does the job uh, she's grounding uh, flour from corn uh, for dinner purposes so it's uh, you know some of these you know was utilized a long time ago when I used to live in India uh, you know we used to uh, use stone for grounding uh, so it's you know it's in a way I guess it really reminded me you know of the olden days while on the boat uh, we noticed there's a group congregating and uh, when we went up close we found that they were all walking away with blood dripping chicken without a head so we realized it was actually for the you know, closer to uh, dinner time I hope you enjoyed the video see you next time